Good morning, church. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. So glad you're joining me this morning to continue on uh, in our series of Prayers of Jesus. And if you haven't heard it uh, from anyone else this week, I just wanted to let you know that, that you matter, that I appreciate each and every one of you, and thank you for taking the time to, to not just listen, but the time to invest through comments that you're sharing, the time to invest through sharing the message, or the time that you take investing as you allow the Word of God to penetrate your hearts and to begin to shape and to mold uh, who, who you are as a person. And, and then you take what you're learning and you live that out in your homes and your places of work and your community. So I want to say thank you. Listen, your story matters. It's important. And today, the prayer that Jesus prays, as he's hanging on a cross, about to take his last breath, this prayer that he prays reinforces that very um, truth, is that you and I, we're valuable, we're important. And our lives, our stories, they matter particularly when we live our life in such a way that glorifies God. We then become a part of the building of God's kingdom. And that's what Jesus prayed for. Luke 23, verse 34, the first half of verse 34, is this prayer. It's not even a full verse long. It's a very, very short prayer. But in that prayer, if, if you understand what's happening in the context in which Jesus is praying this, then you can, you'll see so much more than just the word forgiveness being offered. You, you'll understand there's so much more to this prayer than just Jesus asking God to be merciful. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to that verse, Luke 23, verse 34. I want you to hear this prayer that Jesus prays. Jesus said this, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. See, at surface level, it does sound just like a conversation between Jesus and God and Jesus saying, you know what, God, forgive them. Have mercy on them because you have every right to rain down your judgment on them right now. But I am asking you, God, will you please forgive them? That is mercy. And Jesus is asking God to extend mercy to the crowd. But the crowd, that's what I want you to understand, church, is that there was a crowd there. And so when Jesus was praying this prayer, when he was having this conversation between he and his heavenly father, he, Jesus is doing more than just communicating with God. Jesus is also communicating with the people. And I want you to hear the message. He's praying for mercy, yes, but there's more to it than just Jesus praying for mercy for you and I. You see, you would know that if you read Luke 6, 36. <clears throat> Jesus says this to, to the very same crowd that is now gathered and is standing watching Jesus being crucified. Some year or so earlier, Jesus shared these words in Luke 6, 36. He said, be merciful just as your father is merciful. See, Jesus is praying for mercy from his father for a crowd that he had already taught this. And that if they, he had taught them, if they're going to receive mercy, then they in turn have to extend mercy. They have to be merciful. They have to forgive, even though someone might not be deserving of that. And so what Jesus is really saying in his prayer is, you need to continue to gather. You need to continue to bear witness. You need to continue to share your life with other people. Invest in their stories and in turn share your story with them. And, and that is how you can be merciful. See, it's tough to forgive somebody that you haven't invested in. It's tough to, to receive forgiveness from somebody that you know nothing about and they know nothing about you. So when Jesus is saying this prayer, he is, he is literally asking those that stood and watched. And how do we know that? There are people there watching because Luke mentions it. 
See, Luke could have just talked about what was happening to Jesus. He could have given us a, an account of the crucifixion, which he did. He could have just shared the, the prayer that Jesus prayed. But no, Luke mentions before this prayer and after this prayer that there was a crowd. He talks specifically about the women that were there that had invested in him. They invested so much in Jesus, and Jesus had invested so much in them that when they were walking with him to the place where he would be hanging on that cross, they were weeping. And Jesus even stops to have a conversation with them, or even in the midst of his struggle and his pain, he still communicates with these women that were there mourning. And we know that they stayed because Luke even mentions that, that after uh, Jesus had died and, and there was a witness there, the centurion, that saw everything that had happened, he says, you know, praise God. He praised God saying, surely this was a righteous man. Like the, here's a complete stranger to who Jesus was. But when he witnessed what had happened, not just what had happened physically when he had died, and, and we have an account of what happened to the earth and, and how the, the, the sky grew dark and, and the ground shook, but it was more than just that. He also saw people there putting their own life at risk and were, that were grieving for him, and surely he, recognized, he said, recognized that. He said, surely this was a righteous man because of what he saw and witnessed. But Luke goes on to say, all those who knew him, including those that same group of women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. All of those who knew him, they had invested in Jesus' life and in turn allowed Jesus to invest in their life. And when Jesus prayed this simple prayer, he said, God, please forgive them. He was also teaching one last time to this crowd, listen, you have been with me, and I'm going to ask you to continue to be with me. You've been with each other, and I'm going to ask you to continue to be with each other. And that is how you can live out this forgiveness. You receive forgiveness, you give forgiveness. You receive mercy, you give mercy. He taught them that. And they, they were demonstrating that right there in their, by their presence. And Jesus was praying that that would continue on after his physical life here on earth came to an end. And that's what Jesus prayed then. And that is still his prayer as he sit, is seated at the right hand of God the Father right now. Is that we would continue to gather. We would continue to bear witness who Jesus is. And that happens the way by and through the ways in which we care for one another. And if you want to create this atmosphere, or as I've been learning and studying a lot lately in my own personal life, if you want to create this culture of, of caring, that happens through telling your story. That happens through allowing other people to invest into your story, and in turn, you investing into their story. And that's what happens when a community gathers and is merciful. Not because it comes natural to us, but we're merciful because we have already received mercy from him. God has given that to us. And that's what Jesus prayed for. And I don't know about you, but I want to continue to, to live out and be an embodiment of that prayer. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing, right? Right? They should be punished, but I'm asking you not to punish them. That is mercy. So, Father, be merciful. It's another way that Jesus' prayer could be worded. Father, be merciful to them. Because I know when you do that, they will be merciful to each other and to others. Short prayer, yes. Very powerful prayer, though. When you take the time to really slow down and understand what it was that Jesus was praying. So I encourage you to join me this week. Continue to pray through the Lord's Prayer. But add this in there. It's already in there, right? But really add this depth to what you're saying. When you are saying, God, today, I'm asking you to extend mercy. Forgive my debts. But when you do that, I too am going to be merciful. So help me to forgive my debtors. And when we, when we really pray that prayer, when we understand what it is we are praying for, 
and asking God to then give us the strength and, and the wisdom and the patience and the peace to go out and give freely what we have already received, it will literally revolutionize the world. And that's what Jesus was praying in this simple prayer. And that's what I want to continue to pray in my journey with the Lord today. And I pray you do that. You join me in doing that as well. I want to pray for you, church. Father, thanks. Thank you for being merciful. Thank you for hearing the words of your son and, and extending that mercy to the crowd then, like you extend that mercy to the crowd that have gathered today. But Father, I pray that we wouldn't just hang on to your forgiveness, the mercy that you've extended to us, but I pray that it would so compel us to go out and to be merciful with others. And we recognize that in order to do that, we have to make an investment. Somebody has to know us and we have to know somebody else and that we need to continue to grow in our love and care for one another. We recognize that everyone's uh, life and their story is valuable. And I, Father, Father, I pray for those opportunities to intermingle with our lives and our stories and, and, and to create that environment where we can uh, be merciful with one another when necessary, but most importantly, create that environment that we can be merciful to, to a lost and dying world that desperately needs to know of your love. Go with us, we pray, into this new week and, and provide those opportunities. And uh, we give you all the praise and honor and glory in, in advance for how you're going to move in and through us. We ask this all now in your Son, our Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you've been enjoying these uh, messages as you've been looking to God's Word and, and understanding a little bit more what Jesus is praying and his, these powerful prayers that uh, he shared with us. And I pray that you are uh, praying those and, and living those prayers out. Uh, and tell somebody about it. Make a comment. Let us know about it. Um, I'd love to hear from you. But understand and know this, that I'm praying for you as well. And I'm excited about what God is doing among us. Until next week, God bless.